I've seen the future, and its name is Marco. <laughs> Welcome back everybody to Hoot Loot, a Hoot Entertainment production. Today is March 19th, 2022, and yes, the future's name is Marco, as in Marconomics. But uh, Roz doesn't really get it, never mind. We have a great show for you today. It's called Crushing for a Market. Uh, it's called Russian for a Market Crushing. I kind of, kind of mixed it up there. It's okay, never mind. We've got a great show. Things are happening all over the place that you need to know about. 30 minutes of your time is worth an incalculable amount of their time, okay? If I put on a human calculator, I'll tell you what it is in real time. Well, I don't know, but cable news is the leading cause of mental illness. I know that for certain. And if you would like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it right here and we'll be back in a minute with the charts welcome back everybody to russian for a market crushing that's unfortunately what we have to say to you today and we start off with another scam and we don't like scams as you know we've reported on the qr scam the whatsapp scam you know there's so many scams everybody's a scammer but now there's another one that i didn't know about and maybe you don't either it's called the Dave Inks scam, or the Wells Fargo scam, or the Dave Inks Wells Fargo scam, whatever you want to call it. But I know this. I was scammed out of $7,000 illegally. If you have been scammed, get hold of me, because I know what exactly to do. Look at this, okay? I, I'm sorry, I lost my window, but this is research papers and fact checking, okay? Wells Fargo, you're dead. All right, well, we're on to Bitcoin now. It's one of the canaries in the coal mine, as I refer to it, because canaries are the first to die from coal gas, and unfortunately, the first to die from making bad investments are going to be people who buy this piece of bit. <laughs> piece of bit. Get it? A bit? All right. Never mind. Um, Tesla is another canary in the coal mine, and it looks like it has a little rally, a snapback, maybe a bear flag. But it's a major downtrend right now, and it's just going to snap up and down, snap up and down. Hard to trade. Don't trade it. Just get out of it, get out of it, get out of it. That's all I got to say. And, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this. Elon Tesla, Elon Musk, not Elon Tesla. God, what am I talking about? Elon Musk has now sued the SEC for making his in-house lawyers approve his tweets on Twitter. He doesn't like his freedom of speech impaired upon. Oh my God, when did he wake up to that? I don't know, we'll find out. All right, next chart, Art Innovation, Kathy Wood. Anything that starts with A-R-K, and there are a number of them, look like this. Everybody's underwater. Why? Because they bought the hippest, trendiest stocks they could, and they lost. And we used to have Renaissance IPO, but that looks just like ARK. Now, gone to the indexes. Okay, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay, this is now in the downtrend, too. Well, I'd be dinging all day if I could. Well, let me at least give a little ding ding. Oh, God, that hurts my ears. All right, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a series of declining tops, declining bottoms, possibly a downtrend, maybe a bear, uh, maybe a bear market. Um, and it looks like a bottom above a bottom and a top above a top in the last couple of weeks. Possibly a bear flag, possibly a reversal, but possibly not, probably not. I don't think so. I think the ding is going to last. Here's the Dow Jones also, five years, okay? You see the tops below tops, bottoms below bottoms, and it goes right up to the trend line. Just right up to it. Now, I don't know what's going to happen when the market opens on Monday, but my guess is this will prove to be some major resistance, okay? So let's go on to the NASDAQ 100, home of all the trendiest stocks in the world. All right, now you've got a series of bottoms below bottoms and tops below tops, and this was the original ring-a-ding-ding. On just on January 7th, you remember, I rang the bell. I said ding-ding to the market. Okay, now this is also in a bear flag, it appears, and, but it does have higher highs and lower lows. Or lower, <laughs> lower highs and lower lows. Boy, I'm mixed up here. It must be, I must have had too much to drink last night. <laughs> Jeez, 
All right, so uh, we've got the S&P 500, home of big market cap companies, and this is also looks the same as the NASDAQ 100, a series of tops and low tops, bottom full of bottoms, and a possible bear flag or snapback to the point of um, decline. We'll see. Small cap index, same thing, bear flag. Well, this one doesn't have any snapback in it. I think this one is about to tip over. Now, the critical exception here is you're looking at right now the transportation index. I don't know what kind of bell to do. I don't know whether it gets a happy bell or it gets an unhappy bell. You know, I just don't know. You know we're going to give a little bit of, oh, God, that hurts my ears. We're going to give a little bit of both, a couple question marks, bottoms, little bottoms, tops, little pus, but then a breakout. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the prices are going up, the volumes aren't. That's called stagflation or hyperinflation to come. We've been talking about it for a year, and now it's here. Now, gasoline. Need you gas blast time. Oh! Like that. No, not like that. Like that. Like that. Okay, better. Now. Gasoline is at the highest level since 2007, 2008, before the uh, preceding the market liquidation event, meltdown of 7, 8. I don't know, but I'm not very happy about seeing this. And I know that Russia is the, one of the largest producers, and their oil's been held off the market. So, you know, we're going to see a lot of volatility in commodities now. Watch out. Stocks are going up, they're going down, they're doing this, they're doing that. I don't know. Right now, I'd be happy being in precious metals, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay, CRB commodities, look at that, an exponential growth curve. When have you ever seen that? Crude oil has been up to 130 and down to 95 in a matter of a couple of days. That's what you get from... Um, banning it, unbanning it, selling it, not selling it, trading it, not trading it. That's all the news for you on Russian crude and crude in general. Okay? Now, natural gas, the Russian market controls it. There are two markets, one for us and one for them. The European market, mm, it's likely to be a cold, cold winter this year. Especially, especially if I stand in front of the Kremlin where it gets really, really cold. Ugh. Okay, natural gas. The reason there are two markets and it's not competitive is for one reason. One reason only. It can't be transported cheaply unless you have a pipeline. Why did the current administration kill the Keystone Pipeline? Another reason to vote out the incumbents and make America laugh again. All right, and check out these wonderful shirts we have coming for you all around me, like here and here. And here. All right, we're going on to the agricultural fund, and food prices are going up. What's new? All right, they're hitting record levels, and they keep going up and up and up and up. And where's the damn food when you need it? I don't know. Uh, McDonald's is raising their prices. Everybody's raising their prices, as a matter of fact. Procter & Gamble, McDonald's, Starbucks, you name it. But the wages aren't catching up very much, are they? And earnings are going up. So I wonder why the administration thinks they're not giving to the rich and stealing from the poor. Because they really are, if you think about it. And so is their little cronies at the Fed. All right, now we're going to go to corn. Ukraine is the third largest corn exporter in the world. They will have a major effect on corn. And corn is ever-present everywhere. Okay, corn is used in ethanol, methanol, um, cornucopias. <laughs> I'm not sure what is a cornucopia. I don't know. Anyway, uh, soybeans are going, going skyward, and you got wheat. And uh, Ukraine is called the breadbasket of Europe for a reason. That's because uh, they export half of the world's wheat. Half. Okay? So get your bread today. Okay? As fast as you can. Bread lines, well, I don't know if we're going to have them or not. If half the bread's gone, who knows? Base metals, uh, these are the things that go into building things, like houses, for example. Nickel, zinc, tin, aluminum, and all those little things. Okay, they're going up too, with a snapback to the trend line and uh, trying to go up again. Lumber, now this one is curious. It's in a bare flag. 
And why do I define it as a bear flag? Because it's upward sloping after an upward spike. But it could be that it's a, um, it could be a bear flag, and, and it, who knows? Um, that's what I think, but I don't know. Uh, U.S. Copper Fund, another building product, it's in definitely in a bull flag. Metals are getting scarcer and scarcer, including an $8 billion margin call on nickel. All right, the U.S. dollar is finally, finally, finally breaking down. You'd think the dollar was the strongest ever, but I don't think so. I don't think so. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the dollar for 20 years like we did here, you're going to see the green line, which means the dollar is going to explode. Who knows what happens next? And the dollar is likely to break down under the red line, and that's meaningful for gold and silver and other precious metals and commodities in general. And it's horrible for stocks. Gold for five years. Well, it looks like we made a double top, but um, it didn't exactly reverse. And it may stick to the bounce off the trend line or above the trend line. Once it makes a double top, it doesn't mean that it's um, uh, topped for good. It just means there's some resistance at that price level. Okay? And once it um, exceeds that price level, it explodes. And here's gold for 20 years. You can see gold rose from... Uh, 2002 to 2011, the last uh, commodities bull market, it rose 800%. So if we project that out uh, from the $1,000 bottom that you see here in 2016, we get a upside target of 8000 8000 Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you at all. 8000 gold. Silver. hi -o. Silver's looking good, too. There's a year chart. What do you do? All right, silver for 20 years. This one is really good. Look at that. This thing could explode to 200 using the same methodology I use on gold. I don't know, but it's in short supply, and there's a short squeeze on it. Gold and silver miners. These are the companies that produce and mine gold and silver. These are also broken out, and they typically lead gold and silver as metals, okay? The miners typically lead the metals. That's all you need to know. Yamada Gold or Yamala Gold is one of the ones that I've picked to, because it's broken out and it has a lot of relevant, <laughs> relative strength. I don't know why I'm saying relevant strength. I had to hit myself with the bell. Anyway, uh, El Dorado Gold, uh, this one also breaking out from five years, 1102. Wheat and precious metals also breaking out. Look at that. Very strong, mostly silver. Very good. I'd hang on to it. These are long-term investments, folks, not to be played with or traded. You can hold them for a number of years, like uh, 2002 to 2011, and make a fortune doing it. Core mining. Well, this wouldn't make me, uh, you know, very interested at first glance, but... Uh, I put uh, core mining for 20 uh, years, monthly, um, and look, it can get to 70 or more under certain circumstances, and if it breaks out, if it breaks above 10, watch out, this thing's going flying, all right? And now the, uh, the, the U.S. five-year treasury index, this thing is uh, meeting resistance. Uh, resistance is a green line that you see up here, and um, what you see is... Uh, the five year is now hitting its target, okay? And we'll show you a little more when we show you the 10 year also hitting its target as the yield curve is flattening. Flattening yield curves are when they occur, when they, when they occur, uh, they're recession um, indicators and they're also indicators of lower bank profits because you land on the short end and you, um, sorry, you, you borrow on the short end and lend on the high end, and you earn the spread. Okay? Same same thing as 30 years. They're all going flat. Okay? What does that mean? That means something good. I can tell you that. All right. Apple. This is the largest cap stock. Unfortunately, now joining the downtrend and bear market. These guys have held up the longest, and they're good, they've got good products and everything. But look at 
declining tops, declining bottoms, and a little gasp at the end. All right, Amazon, nothing to say here. Downtrend, downtrend, bear market. Google, about to enter the Dow, I think. Um, forming head and shoulders around the top. Beats me, but either one is bad, I can tell you that. And it's overvalued, so <laughs> it's not a good time. Oh, and Meta Platform, speaking of scammers, I never met a scammer I really liked. Or at least Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> likes scammers and puts his Meta Platform out for him. Oh, my God. And he banned assass assassination calls for Russia, pissing off Lindsey Graham, who <laughs> keeps calling him and calling and calling and say, someone got to get rid of him. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, let's see. Netflix, half-price sale, horror show. What do you think? I don't like it very much. It's pulling everything down. NVIDIA, love them chips. It looks like a bull flag or a bear flag. I don't know. Up arrow, down arrow. Beats me. I don't know. Let me take a sip. I'm, I'm tired. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> All right. Microsoft, ran a type reversal. Uh, I don't sound like I'm rapping. Rapping, 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 rapping. All right, Microsoft. Right at the top reversal. This one looks really bad. Really bad. Really bad. Really bad. All right, Bank Index. Also, bear flag, broke down, snapped up, looking bad. Pulling a lot of Dow stocks down with them and the whole financial sector. Also, because their earnings are only price driven and not volume driven. They're not making any more money. They're just charging more for the same volume of products. Broker dealer index. Okay. Breakdown. And um, tops low tops, bottoms low bottoms, snap up, and SpaceX is not going to happen, I don't think. All right. Berkshire Hathaway, largest holder of Apple, sub substantial holdings in Chevron, no cryptos, no tech wrecks, Congratulations to Warren Buffett. You lead the market now up, as long as it goes up, that is. All right. American Express, never leave home without it, they say. I do sometimes, but that's what they say. At least, I think that's what they say. It's in a bear flag, like every other financial company, and it's made top below a top, but I'm not so sure about it. We'll see. MasterCard reported earnings, and they were good only because prices went up. Prices went up. They didn't have to pay anybody but more money. Their margins went up. Same with Visa. Costco. I don't know what's going on with this, because retail sales are going down. But it could be that everybody's stocking their shelves like we are, and you are, and everybody else is. The inventory profits. And Walmart is uh, appearing to benefit from the stimulus. Where the f is my stimulus check? I thought I'd ask. All right. UPS. That's what I was talking about. Uh, well, it's not really ready to collapse, but it could be. Actually, UPS also reported earnings that were price-driven, not volume-driven. They're not delivering a lot, of, a lot of packages, at least to, to me, that I know of. At FedEx Corp, same thing, no increase in um, volume, just increases in prices, and no more package deliveries either. Airline index, who's flying? Who wants to get a colonoscopy by the TSA at the check-in counter and then uh, argue with the stewardess over the mask you got to wear? Forget it. I'm not going to fly, and these guys are getting killed with jet fuel prices that are barely hedged. They don't hedge their jet fuel prices anymore. They're losing money like crazy. They're going to need another bailout anytime soon. Home builders, they're a major sign of the economy. Bear flag, uh, their building products are getting more expensive. Interest rates are going up. Lumber was going up. Looks like uh, copper is going up. And interest rates are definitely going up sometime, if not immediately. So we're looking at this like a bear flag and big trouble for the economy. Wells Fargo again. Don't be amused, be informed, but never let a bank defraud you again. Or Dave's Inc. fraud you again. Okay, with that, I want to say goodbye. 
why don't you like and subscribe for the information you cannot get anywhere else. If you watch cable news, you'll go insane. And I'm not insane yet. All right? All right. Like and subscribe to these buttons here, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.